Well, folks, there she is, the Rube Goldberg door opener upper. Sure, sure, I know they have a gadget called an electric eye that does practically the same thing. But that's no good for a waiter. You see, the, ele the electricity might give the waiter a shock, then he'd forget to come back to pick up his tip, and he'd lose his professional standing. How does this door opener upper really work? It's very simple. But watch close. Now here's what happens. You see, waiter places cat B on pile of dirty dishes A. Now cat B sees mouse C. Of course, this is a stuffed mouse because he must be used for the next waiter. Now cat jumps on mouse C, causing lever D to lift lighted candle E, which ignites fuse F and sets off bomb G, opening door H very gently. Well, folks, I suppose there are one or two among you who think that my uh, inventions are a bit ahead of their time. A shade fantastic, perhaps. All right, go on and say it. Downright screwy. But let me tell you something. I've got lots of company, genuine inventors, guys who've got their stuff protected by the United States Patent Office. And believe me, some of it needs protection, if you know what I mean. For instance, Now, here's an invention that was granted patent number 556248 back in the year 1896. But don't ask me why. <laughs> this little nifty is a labor-saving device if there ever was one. It's an automatic hat tipper for the lazy Lothario. Fitted snugly inside of this deluxe derby, that is, in addition to the wearer's slightly addled head, is a conglomeration of wheels, cogs, gears, ratchets, counterweights, strings, and pulleys, which gallantly doffs the chapeau whenever a young heiress passes by. Well, anyway, this is just one example of the many queer devices that have actually been patented. And here's a copy of the patent to prove it. Oh, there are literally hundreds of such patents on file in the United States Patent Office. The inventors were all perfectly serious. They really believed that their inventions would make things easier for us and our lives pleasanter and safer. But by far the most persistent dream of inventors has been to get something for nothing. That is, to create a machine that will start itself, overcome all friction, and still have enough power left to do useful work. In short, perpetual motion machines. Now here's a typical example of what I mean, a famous old standby. Of course, you all know that when something is dipped underwater, it seems to lose weight. So this particular perpetual motion machine is designed to have some of the weights in water and some of them out of water at all times. It's all very simple. And so are you if you think it'll work. But confidentially, I've got one that will work. And if you'll excuse me for a few minutes, I'll show you. No, Mr. Goldberg, not even your genius is equal to that task. In fact, the United States Patent Office will no longer grant a patent for the design of a perpetual motion machine because the experts in that office know that you can't get something for nothing. <laughs> Folks, I've done it. I've discovered the secret of perpetual motion. Yes, sir. Long, long after you and I have departed from this earthly scene, this machine of mine will be working on and on and on and on, never stopping for Sunday, holidays, or bank night. On and on and on and on. Oscar. <laughs>